Okay, so today we're going to be tying the D and D, but the Missouri version using Missouri Turkey. I'm going to start my thread, which I'm using, as you can see, this right here. I'm going to start it about two eyes back, and I'm going to slowly wrap forward and then wrap back, coating the hook shank and using my tag end as a guard to just slide my thread down to create nice touching wraps. I'm going to bring it all the way back to where my thread hangs down right at the barb and then go ahead and cut my thread. Now I'm using a hopper hook 2x long 280 size 16. And what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to go ahead and dub my thread and I want to just go ahead and use any kind of a squirrel dubbing, any color that I choose. I'm going to go ahead and use some olive right here. Now, I'm not going to dub a lot, but what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, create a nice tight noodle on my thread. And I'm just going to go ahead and make it a small guy. I don't want a lot in length because I'm not going to waste it and I'm dubbing all the way up to the hook here and what I want to remember is is that this is for the body and the body uh, is is going to be one-third of the hook shank and so with that said I want to make sure I don't over over dub this length from here to here I'm only going to be putting on about this much and so with that I'm going to go ahead now and create a dubbing loop and I'm going to go ahead and do that with my fingers and I'm going to start it right like that a couple of wraps I'm going to come from underneath wrap right over the top and then I'm going to wrap forward just let my bobbin hang for right now but what I am going to do is I'm going to run it all the way to the ground and I'm just going to let it sit on, on the tabletop so it's not swinging in my way. Connect your dubbing tool, your dubbing whirl, as you can see here. And I'm going to go ahead and hold this apart just like that. Now, I'm using a Missouri bucktail that was harvested last year. And I'm going to go ahead and pull a little clump out from the bottom where it was cut at the hide. Just like that. Now again, remembering that I'm going to only use this deer, this deer where I am dubbing the body. So I don't want a whole lot. And if you noticed, I'm taking out all the under fur. And the tips are in one side. And I'm going to go ahead and splay this out just like that and kind of comb it notice all that now that's coming out with my combing process into the trash can it goes so now I want to measure up and that's about all I want actually this is a little more than I want so I'm going to pull some out now I'm going to go ahead and bunch this back up and get a little more of that. And I'm going to sharpen up and even my tips. And then I'm going to transfer it to my right hand. And what I did that far is, is this is going to make it so much easier for me to stick this into the dubbing loop instead of trying to stick the tips in and fight them. So I'm going to run this up about the even. And I'm going to go ahead and just lay it out nice nice and flat if you can see that and again I want to try and bring this up to as close to the hook shank as I can and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the loop and I'm going to start my whirl and give it a good spin hold it and start wrapping and spinning that deer and what I want to do is, since I'm using an 8 out thread, I have to be careful that I don't overspin and break the thread. So what I'm looking at right now is the way the deer hair 
is protruding straight out perpendicular from my thread. I can tell by looking at that that the, that the actual deer hair is locked into that, that twisted thread. So I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping. I'm not concerned about my thread hanging off my bobbin. It's way far forward. So I'm going to start right where the barb is at, and I'm going to just keep wrapping forward with touching wraps, just like this. Don't want to trap that hair under my bobbin thread and I want to keep wrapping forward now it's completed and as you can see I'm about three quarters of, or a third or so up I've left room for my wing and thorax and of course the head so I'm going to keep wrapping a wee bit forward and you can tell by the dubbing how much further I've gotten so I'm going to quit there I've actually gone one too far and I'm going to go ahead and pull this hair out make sure nothing's trapped and I'm going to go ahead and tie it in a couple of wraps like that I can go ahead and cut this set it aside take my bobbin and wrap back right through and into that hair if you can see what I'm doing and I'm really locking it down and I'm going to wrap back forward again. So thus now, all this is locked in and it's all sticking pretty far out the sides. So I need to trim and I'm just going to start on the top because I'm going to lay a tent wing on top. I really want to start cleaning this up so I can see where I'm at. Using deer hair with its, with its capabilities of floating, this fly really does float. Now I learned this fly back in 2003 and I just came across it in my notes I haven't tied it in a long time but um, I do remember it being really cool the way it floated now if you noticed I'm right at the uh, hook point on the bottom so that's the extent of what I've created so now here I'm going to come in sideways like as if my tent wing was on top and trim that hair down just like that so that's the uh, dubbing and deer hair on the bottom of this fly it's pretty cool to be able to dub and spin put that deer hair on so now the next step that I'm gonna do is, is I've clear coated my turkey tail and I've put two or three coats of, you know, rattle can clear from one of the, the hardware stores, the real cheap stuff. And what I'm looking for is, is I'm going to go ahead and take right out of here about half inch. And I'm going to cut it at the stem. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull it right out. All the uh, barbules are glued together thanks to the clear. And the amount that I cut widthwise is the is the amount that I wanted to wrap around as you can see each side now I don't want to tie off down here where the flats are too wide because they will have a tendency to separate when I create my tent wing so I'm going to work my way up this piece to about there and notice that my thread is still hanging right at the base here of my deer hair and I'm just going to go ahead and create a nice tent wing wrap it gently around the top I don't want to pinch that or roll that and I'm pinching it just like that wrap for or backwards right over the top now don't do too many because you want to make sure that you're in the right place so I got to rotate just a little on my wing because I want it to halfway down halfway down looks good so I'm going to go ahead and now tie in forward and you can see how far back I am from my hook eye and cut this off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and lock it all down. I'm going to pinch it so it doesn't spin on me. And I'm just going to lock it right in just like that. 
and I'm going to wrap back a little more, locking everything in, and I'm looking at my thorax location and size and where the head's going to be. So I'm wrapping back to make sure that I have the right size thorax. And so from here, I'm going to go ahead now and take my hackle that's sized to the hook, which also, when you size this, you, you want to make sure that you're going around a pretty heavy diameter here. So you want to make sure maybe that the, uh, um, the uh, length of your barbules on your hackle is a little bit smaller than you normally would use. Notice it's dull side up. And I'm going to come right in and tie just a couple of wraps to hold it. The next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and take my peacock and I'm going to wrap it in also, which this is going to actually create the thorax when I wrap it. Just put in a couple of wraps. You don't need any more. Now the cool part is, is this is also harvested from duck flank from last year, harvested it um, from the side of um, a duck. And I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, a couple of them. I like the black barbules on it, the uh, barring. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple. It's a little hard to try and count them out, but I really only want two at this time. But notice the curvature. So I'm going to go ahead now and gently wrap. I'm not worried about the length, but it's out forward over the hook eye. And I'm going to see the loop of my thread. No pull. I want this right on top and flat for my uh, antennae. So I want them right on top and flat. And you want to adjust this. Don't, don't just say good enough. And then once I've got it, I'm going to give it a couple more wrapping backwards, not forwards. So I'm liking what I'm seeing. And what I'm going to do now is wrap a little forward and I'm locking it in and I'm going to wrap and you can start to see, be careful you don't move these things around just yet and get them where you want them. And let your uh, thread hang. I'm going to go ahead now and cut the tag ends off. And since I did that, I'm going to go ahead now and look and I'm going to take one of these guys out. And I like that one, so I'm going to take this guy out. So now I'm going to adjust this a wee bit for length. That's good enough. So from here, I'm going to take my peacock, and I'm going to gently wrap. But first, I'm going to wrap my thread back and allow that peacock to wrap up against the base of that feather wing. And then the thread will keep my peacock snuggled against itself on each wrap. Now don't go crazy with this. This is not a big thorax. That's about it. So I'm going to come, or a big meaning diameter and taking up a lot of space. You are putting a lot of material in this little space. So be careful on your thread wraps. The next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to take my hackle and do that same thing. And I'm going to wrap it to touch right behind that wing. And I'm not going to over hackle this. This hackle is not really what holds this fly above water. So I'm only going to give it one. That's the two. And now as I come around, I'm going to go ahead and follow it with the thread. And I'm going to lock it in. Notice that my antennae have not moved. As I move this around and tie it in, I'm pretty much done right there. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this hackle. And again, be careful of your antennae. And what you want to do now is you're going to create your whip finish. Okay. Right under the antennae. So let's do this and wrap right here. And there we go. The antennae is sticking up. So what's happening is, is I'm putting that whip finish right up against the base of those antennae and that's actually creating a wee bit of a ledge that's, that's actually holding that uh, antennae up in the air. So what you don't want is, is when this thing gets wet, uh, you don't want your antennae to lose their, um, 
let's just let's just say uh, stiffness to hold them up like that is that not cool so I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple more in here and I caught a couple of hackle unbelievable there we go all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and just do a normal whip and I'm gonna pull those antennae back Just like that, create a nice head. That's good enough. Okay, so now our antennae are sticking out, as you can see. So now, since this is a tent wing caddis, I'm going to come up. And I'm going to go right here at the hook bar or uh, bend. And I'm going to come in at a nice angle. And I'm going to pinch my feather together so it stays even. And I'm going to come right in like this and cut. Now we've created this tent wing, as you can see, with the antennae and the deer hair. It's really kind of cool. And this baby's going to float really well so I can kind of do this if I want but I don't really care that's the way I want it to sit in the water just like that now I have cut the hackle off the top but I've learned that there's really no need to because it really doesn't affect either way this what this fly floating in the water so again this is a fly that that was designed by a gentleman and he called it the D&D &D, the duck deer and duck well, we substituted the duck for a Missouri turkey, and we've substituted his uh, golden with the Missouri regular duck flank.